Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to discuss about normal thyroid ultrasound and ultrasonographic findings in some thyroid pathologies. So without further delay, let's jump into the video. Uh, this is the transverse view of the thyroid gland and this is the longitudinal view of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is made of two thyroid lobes connected by midline isthmus. So this is the one thyroid lobe and this is another thyroid lobe. It is connected by isthmus. So isthmus is located in front of the trachea. So uh, we have to remember thyroid gland normally is hyperechoic and homogeneous. So this entire hyperechoic structure is the thyroid gland. So in front of the thyroid gland we can see this hypoechoic structure. This is the strap muscles. So there are two strap muscles in the interior aspect of the thyroid gland. These are uh, sternothyroid. This is the sternothyroid muscle and this is the sternohyoid muscle. On lateral side of thyroid gland, we can see this is the carotid vessels. Okay, these two are the carotid vessels. If we take the longitudinal image of the thyroid gland, we see this type of image. So this is the one thyroid lobe. In front of this, these are the muscles. Thyroid lobe is hyperechoic than the surrounding muscles. So here we can see this is the carotid vessels. This, are, this is the trachea. This is the sternothyroid and sternohyoid muscles. Normally thyroid is examined in supine position with the neck extended. So neck is normally extended for the better visualization of thyroid gland. After knowing the normal anatomy, let's uh, talk about how to measure thyroid gland. This image, we can take uh, three different measurements. One is societal, another is transverse and another is anterior posterior. And this is the societal measurement. So this is the longest measurement. And normally the societal length is 5 cm. So in this image, this is the anterior posterior length. So the anterior posterior length, if this is more than 2 cm, then we call it thyromegaly. Among all these measurements, anterior posterior measurement is more important because if the anterior posterior measurement is more than 2 cm then we call it thyromegaly so another measurement is transverse so this is the transverse measurement so generally we take three measurements and among them anterior posterior measurement is quite important so isthmus can be measured and uh, isthmus if we measure this length then normally this will be around 0.3 cm in this image we can see this is the normal thyroid lobe and this is the thyroid lobe in Hashimoto thyroiditis. This is the common cause of the hypothyroidism. It uh, usually present as painless diffuse enlargement of the thyroid gland. In ultrasonography thyroid will be diffusely enlarged. So we can see uh, in, in this image this is the normal thyroid lobe and we can see the thyroid lobe is diffusely enlarged and the thyroid parenchyma is heterogeneous. Another important finding of the Hashimoto thyroiditis in ultrasound is multiple hypoechoic micronodules. So these are the multiple hypoechoic micronodules. Sometimes in Hashimoto thyroiditis, cervical impaired empathy may be seen. But generally, cervical impaired empathy is associated with thyroid malignancy. Another important disease is Graves disease. So this is the normal thyroid ultrasound and this is the ultrasonographic finding in Graves disease. So as we all know, Graves disease is the common cause of hyperthyroidism. So here in this image, we can see thyroid gland is diffusely enlarged and it is the ecotexture of the thyroid gland is heterogeneous. So on color Doppler, increased flow can be appreciated. Here is another term called thyroid inferno. So thyroid inferno is a specific color flow pattern in Graves disease. Here in this image, this is the Graves disease, the ultrasonographic finding of the Graves disease. And if we put the color Doppler, we can see this type of the image. So this is called thyroid inferno. So another important cause of the diffuse thyroid enlargement is Riddle's thyroiditis. So this is the normal thyroid lobe. And this is the image of the ultrasonographic image of the Riddle's thyroiditis. So here in this image, we can see this is the midline structure is the trachea. This is the left thyroid lobe and this is the right thyroid lobe. Reader's thyroiditis is rear fibrosing form of the immune mediated chronic thyroiditis. Sometimes it may progress to complete hypothyroidism and patient may need long term thyroid replacement. So in ultrasonography we can see extensive fibrosis and infiltration to adjacent organ may be seen. So in this image we can see the right thyroid lobe has infiltrated the carotid vessels. So this is the image of the Riddle's thyroiditis. Another important pathology is decurbin thyroiditis. As we all know, decurbin thyroiditis is a painful condition and thyroid lobe is diffusely enlarged. Generally, decurbin thyroiditis is followed by viral infection. In majority of the cases, it will be self-resolving. So this is the image of the decurbin thyroiditis. 
thyroid gland will be enlarged and hypoechoic due to acute inflammation and edema thyroid gland will be hypoechoic 